Whenever I was incarcerated, there was uh, a half joke that people would tell. If you were asking, hey, who was it that did something wrong? Maybe stole something or punched somebody? The smart-ass response would be, oh, well, I don't remember his name, but he was wearing prison blues, he was a felon, uh, he was like between 5'5 five, five and 6 feet tall, he had a bunch of tattoos, a shaved head, and you just keep giving stupid details that fit everybody in the prison. Uh, part of the joke was, of course, that we're active inmates, and I didn't see nothing, and I didn't hear nothing, and, and neither did you. You keep your business to yourself. But another part of the joke was that everybody looks the same. Whenever you look at the picture of 8 or 10 or 12 guys all posing and flexing with the, the prison blues, all with the same tattoos, the same hairstyle, it's obvious that they're members of a group, that they've altered the way they stand, the way that they act, the way they dress, so that they can all fit in together. It's a uniform, essentially. Uniformity. In reality, this makes perfect sense for gangs or even groups to do exactly this. There's a reason the military uses uniforms. It's intimidating to see 10 guys with all the same details staring you down. The implication is you're not dealing with 10 individuals, you're dealing with a group of 10. And so, of course, there's even an incentive for the individuals of the group to purport that they are members of the group, to create the impression that the group is stronger than it might be, because that's how you avoid violence and injury in every aspect of the real world. It's what primates do in the wild, and it's what primates do in prison. You puff out your chest and you stand strong, because that way it's less likely somebody will perceive you as a victim. And if a group of 10, 12, 20 guys can do the same thing, well, all the better. Of course, this creates a dilemma for the individuals in the group, the inmates, because nobody wants to just be a uniform, just be a member of a group. One thing you see a lot of inmates do to, I guess, assert their independence, their individuality, is they pick up small affectations, little things that make them stand out from the next guy. And of course, you first think of the big guy, the guy who works out more than everybody else, and so he's Big Johnny out there on the yard. People know who you're talking about, even if there's three Johnnies, because Big Johnny weighs 300 pounds of muscle. But there are a lot of other ways that uh, people can assert themselves. I saw a guy pay $30 for a pair of shower shoes that was identical to the shower shoes that I had that I'd paid $8 for, except they were a different color. You're only allowed to have black shower shoes in prison for whatever reason, and these were red and purple. The gentleman who owned them had brought them in from county jail and probably from home before that, but they were something that nobody else could get. This created a situational value. Because they were so scarce and so individual, the guy buying them, well then he'd be the dude with the purple and red shower shoes. It's a small thing, but whenever you have so few ways to express your individuality, you wear a uniform, you fit in with a group, little things like that can mean a lot to people. I, I had a, a good friend, Dutch, and he had a Yosemite Sam mustache full on all the way out and waxed and curled and he maintained that thing and it was his pride and joy. I don't know why. I know that he didn't wear it before he came to prison, and I'm pretty sure he didn't wear it after he got out. But you have the time, and then he's Dutch with the crazy mustache. For myself, I would often try and get a small coin. At one point I had an AA chip that somebody had brought in. A couple of times I'd ask an officer, hey, if you happen to drop a dime, literally, on the floor. I'd love to pick it up because I would do stupid little magic tricks. And I, I need to be clear, I'm really bad at them because my hands are not suited to magic. They're too big. But I'd hide the coin and act like I had done something special over off to the side, just wasting time. And it was a way that I, I could express my individuality, something to keep myself busy, but it didn't make me stand out too much. 
Because that is the other side of the, the coin, is individuality and conformity. If you stand out too much, well, you're that weird guy. Maybe that weird guy over in the corner practicing magic by himself. But if you don't stand out at all, if you just devote your whole life to conforming, to fitting into the group, well, then whose life did you lead at the end of the day? Because it wasn't yours. In your everyday life, whenever you have the opportunity to express your individuality, who you are, without alienating those around you, without being, I don't know, overly aggressive in your individuality, do take the opportunity to do it. Because at the end of the day, it's our life and we should live it as ourselves or else you're just living it for other people. You're living it to conform. Thank you for listening today.